Hi guys! Welcome sa Engineered Math Channel. Sa video na to ay tuturo ko sa inyo ang face source. So kung gusto nyo itong matutunan, just keep on watching. Okay, so far ay meron na akong video for introduction to AC circuits kung saan diniscuss ko doon yung characteristics at equation ng ating sinusoidal voltage or current which are called sinusoids as well as tinuro ko sa inyo yung mnemonic kung paano magtransform ng iba't ibang equations ng sinusoids either from positive negative sign, positive or negative cosine with specific phase. Okay, so dinuro ko rin sa inyo kung paano uh, mag-identify ng phase difference between two sinusoids as well as kung paano mag-add or combine ng different sinusoids. Okay, so ngayon, ituturo ko naman sa inyo yung phase source. So ito kasing phase source is one way of transforming sinusoids into complex number. Para mas madali yung magiging computation natin kapag nag-analyze tayo ng circuits using iba't ibang different network theorems. Okay? So, dito kasi sa AC circuits, record sa atin yung knowledge sa complex number since gagamit tayo ng phasers nga. So, I suggest, kung hindi nyo pa napapanood yung video ko about complex number, ay ililink ko na lang para at least meron na kayong background sa different uh, math na gagamitin natin for complex numbers. Okay? So, sabi, sinusoids are easily expressed in terms of phasors which are more convenient to work with than sine and cosine functions. So, yun nga yung gamit ng phasors. Para mas madali nating ma-analyze yung circuit at mas madali yung mathematical computations natin. So, ano ba yung phasor? So, phasor is a complex number that represents the amplitude and phase of a sinusoid. So, it provides a simple means of analyzing linear circuits excited by sinusoidal sources. So, yung phasor nga is a complex number na gagamitin natin para ma-transform yung sinusoids natin into a form na mas madaling i-analyze, which is in terms of complex number. So, gagamitin natin dito yung different forms ng complex number, particularly yung uh, rectangular, exponential, tsaka yung polar. Okay? So, having said that, let's review first our complex numbers. So, itong mga property na to na ira-run through natin is na-discuss ko naman na to dun sa playlist ko sa ADMAT, particularly about complex numbers. So, babasahin ko na lang. So, complex number Z in rectangular form. So, ito siya. Z is equal to X plus JY. Polar form, Z is equal to R angle phi. In exponential form, Z is equal to R e raised to J phi. So, tatlo nga yung forms natin for complex number. Rectangular, polar, saka exponential. Tapos, pag dinaraw natin sa rectangular coordinate system, yung ating complex number, let's say, yung real axis is yung horizontal axis, yung imaginary is yung vertical axis, we have C is equal to X plus JY, so X units and Y units, and then pwede nating i-construct yung right triangle kung saan meron tayong angle phi from the horizontal axis, and then yung hypotenuse natin is yung R. So, based on this figure, Mali-derive natin yung relationship between the rectangular, polar, and exponential form of complex number. So, we have R is equal to square root of X root plus Y squared. Phi is equal to R tan Y over X. X is equal to R cos Phi. And Y is equal to R sin Phi. Or Z is equal to X plus JY equals R angle Phi equals R times quantity cos Phi plus J sin Phi. So, lahat ng to na-discuss ko na sa ADMAT playlist ko. Okay? So, check nyo na lang para mas magkaroon kayo ng knowledge. Tapos, ito yung operations on complex number. So, given the complex number, the Z equals X plus JY equals R angle phi, and Z1 is equal to X sub 1 plus JY sub 1 or in polar form equals sa uh, R sub 1 angle phi sub 1 Z sub 2 is equal to X sub 2 plus JY sub 2 or in polar form equals sa uh, R sub 2 angle phi sub 2. So, kapag addition, Dapat naka-rectangular form yung ating mga complex number. So, add nyo lang yung mga real number and then add nyo lang yung may, may mga, mga imaginary number as well as a subtract. So, subtract nyo naman yung same terms. Okay? Sa multiplication, dapat kino-convert natin yung complex number into polar form. So, kapag meron tayong product, 
multiply natin yung dalawang R and then yung phi, yung angle, i-add natin. Okay? Kapag division, divide lang natin yung dalawang R and, then and yung then, angle, subtract naman natin yung phi sub 1 minus phi sub 2. For reciprocal, we have 1 over Z or 1 over R, then angle, negative phi. Okay? Pag square root, we have square root of Z is equal to square root of R and then angle, yung phi natin, i-divide natin sa 2. Kapag complex conjugate or Z asterisk, equal siya sa X minus JY. So, gagawin nating opposite sign yung merong imaginary number. And then, equal siya in polar form as R angle negative V or in exponential form R e raised to negative J V. Okay? Sa so, mamaya, gagamitin natin ito kapag nag-solve tayo ng some examples on operations and complex number. Okay? Okay, so this time, ay dumako na tayo kung paano ba mako-convert ang isang sinusoids from its trigonometric form which is yung form niya na V sub M sin omega T plus phi right into phasor. So, the idea of phasor is based on Euler's identity. So, we have the equation from Euler's identity as, so E raised to plus minus J phi is equal to cos phi plus minus J sin phi. So, so therefore, meron tayong real part, which is yung cos phi, as well as meron tayong imaginary part, o yung merong J, which is represented by sin phi. Okay? So, therefore, we have cos phi is equal to the real part or RE of the E raised to J phi. And then sin phi is the IM or the imaginary part of E raised to J phi. So, gagamitin natin to yung karakteristik na to nung Euler's identity para matransform natin yung yung sinusoid natin as phasor. Okay? So, given the sinusoid V of T is equal to V sub M cosine omega T plus phi. So, diba ito yung general form natin for sinusoid. Okay? So, kung i-compare natin dito, this time, yung phi natin is itong mismong quantity na to na omega t plus phi. So, therefore, in Euler's identity, we can write it as e raised to j times omega t plus phi or equal siya sa cosine omega t plus phi plus j sine omega t plus phi. Kaso, meron tayong v sub m na amplitude, so pwede natin i-multiply both sides, right? So, distribute ko. Okay, so, kung i-compare natin, therefore, yung real part ngayon nitong V sub M e raised to J quantity omega T plus V is itong cosine, right? V sub M cosine omega T plus V. So, therefore, equal to as saying na itong V sub M cosine omega T plus V is the real part of this e raised to J times quantity omega t plus phi. So, kaya naging ganito. R e v sub m e raised to j omega t plus phi. Or, v of t is equal to the real part netong v sub m times e raised to j times e raised to j omega t. Pinaghiwalay lang natin law of exponent. Tapos, pwede natin i-rewrite itong v sub m e raised to j omega phi as a single letter v. Wherein, ito na yung tinatawag natin na phasor form. So, Therefore, itong capital V natin na to is equal siya sa V sub M e raised to J phi. Tapos, ine-deglect na lang natin itong e raised to J omega t. So, pwede na pala natin i-rewrite itong V of t in phasor form as V sub M e raised to J phi. Or, in polar form, base dun sa natutunan natin, pwede natin i-convert in polar form, right? Yung amplitude na V sub M, then yung angle phi. Okay? So, dapat... Kung ano yung phi mo dito sa exponent ng ating e raised to j phi, siya rin yung magiging angle mo dito sa polar form. Okay? So, yung v yung phase representation of sinusoid v of t. Okay? So, therefore, to get the phase corresponding to a sinusoid, we first express the sinusoid in the cosine form so that the sinusoid can be written as the real part of a complex number. Then, we take out the time factor e raised to j omega t and whatever is left is the phasor corresponding to the sinusoid. So, in case na given tayo na V of t is equal to, let's say, V sub m sine omega t plus v, di ba sa yung ginamit natin this time, hindi cosine? Iko-convert muna natin siya sa cosine form base dun sa natutunan natin dun sa video ko about graphical mnemonic to transform sinusoid, right? And then, kapag na-transform natin siya sa cosine form, tsaka natin, gagawin yung ganitong form. 
yung phasor form niya. Kukunin natin as real part nung e raise to j omega t plus phi yung cosine. Right? And then, ito take out natin tong time factor na e raise to j omega t. So, parang ito lang yung kukunin natin as the phasor. Okay? So, V of t is equal to V sub m cosine omega t plus phi. So, ito yung time domain, right? Now, kapag kinonvert na natin sa phasor domain, ito na siya. V is equal to V sub m angle phi. Right? Pag ginrap natin, we have... So, kapag nasa first quadrant yung ating phasor, which is V sub m with angle phi, leading direction siya. Kapag nasa fourth quadrant naman yung ating phasor, at meron siyang negative angle, let's say, negative theta, laging direction siya. Okay? So, ito yung sinusod phasor transformation. So, kapag time domain, tsaka phasor domain representation, we have the corresponding V sub m cosine omega t plus phi to V sub m angle phi. Kapag V sub m sine omega t plus phi, equal siya sa V sub m angle phi minus 90 degree. So, ito, madiderive lang natin to base dun sa graphical mnemonic ko, ha? Kung nalilito kayo kung bakit naging ganito, balikan nyo yung video ko doon sa pag-transform. Kasi di ba sign siya? Kapag kinansform muna natin siya sa cosine, kailangan natin mag-subtract, right? From cosine ng negative 90. Para maging sign na siya. So, kaya naging ganito yung kanyang phasor domain. And same lang din kapag meron tayong current naman. So, I sub M cosine omega t plus theta. I sub M angle theta. And then, I sub M sine omega t plus theta equal siya sa I sub M angle theta minus 90 degree. Okay? Now, let's check kung anong magiging representation natin kapag hinanap natin yung derivative ng ating sinusoid na B of t is equal to V sub m cosine omega t plus phi. Okay, so try natin hanapin yung derivative. So, derivative of B with respect to time is equal to so, V sub m constant lang. Derivative nitong cosine is negative sign, right? So, negative sign and then, copy yung same inside function na omega t plus phi then, hanapin pa natin yung derivative nitong omega t plus phi with respect to t. Chain rule. Omega. So, therefore, we have negative omega v sub m sine omega t plus phi. So, para matransform natin to into phasor form, kailangan maging cosine siya, right? So, negative sign tayo. So, di ba yung mnemonic natin is eto si negative sine omega t, positive sine omega t, positive cosine omega t, and negative cosine omega t. So, para maging uh, positive cosine omega t siya, kailangan natin dito mag-move ng 90 degree counterclockwise. So, therefore, mag a tayo ng 90 degree dito sa cosine. So, therefore, equal to sa omega v sub m cosine omega t plus phi plus 90 degree. Okay? Or using Euler's identity, it is equal to the real part of omega v sub m e raised to j times itong buong angle na ng cosine. So, omega t plus phi plus 90 degree. Tapos, pag hiwa-hiwalay natin itong mga term na to, we have real part of omega v sub m e raised to j omega t sa distribute si j tapos, times e raised to j phi, times e raised to j 90 degree. Law exponent, right? Now, itong v sub m times e raised to j phi, siya na yung phasor form ng v of t natin, right? So, therefore, pwede natin i write as real part of omega v times e raised to j omega t. And then, itong e raised to j 90 degree, meron yung value na j, right? applying yung natutunan natin sa complex number. So, we have real part of J omega V e raised to J omega T. Or simply, neglecting na lang tong e raised to J omega T, pwede natin i-write as yung derivative nung voltage natin na sinusoid is equal simply dito sa J omega V. So, kapag nag-derivative pala tayo ng time domain na V of T in phasor form, equal siya sa J omega V. So, dadagdagan lang natin yung phasor form niya na V ng J omega. So, nakamultiply sa J omega. Paano naman kapag inintegrate natin? So, let's try. Kapag inintegrate naman natin yung V of T dt. So, parang integral ng V sub M 
cosine omega t plus v. Equal to saan? V sub m. Integral ng cosine is sine omega t plus v over omega. Right? You substitution natin itong omega t plus v. Okay? Now, pwede nating i-transform uli itong sine into positive cosine. So, anong gagawin naman natin? Magma-minus naman tayo from positive cosine papunta sa positive sine ng 90 degrees. So, therefore, equal to sa V sub M cosine omega T plus V minus 90 degree over omega. Or, using Euler's identity, it is equal to the real part of V sub M E raised to J times itong buong Angle na ng cosine, omega t plus v minus 90 degree over omega. Or applying law of exponent ulit, pag hiwa-hiwalay natin itong terms, we have real part of b sub m, unayin ko na itong over omega, e raised to j omega t distribute times e raised to j omega times e raised to negative j 90 degree. Okay? Rewriting uli ito as itong V sub M tapos E raised to J omega equal na yan sa phasor form ng V of T natin as V right. So parang real part of E raised to J omega T V over omega tapos ito E raised to J 90 degree. Negative exponent sa binabako. E kanina alam natin na yung E raised to J 90 degree is what? J right? So, therefore, we have real part of V times E raised to J omega T over J omega. Or neglecting na lang itong time factor natin na E raised to J omega T, we have, have integral pala ng V of T dt is equal to V over J omega. So, this time, kapag in-integrate pala natin yung sinusoid in phasor form, same lang yon as dividing the phasor form ng V natin as B sa, sa J omega. So, kapag derivative, bago multiply tayo sa phasor form ng V na J omega, kapag integral, mag-divide tayo ng J omega. So, ito yung mahalagang concept natin later on na gagamitin kapag nag-analyze tayo ng circuit, particularly involving capacitors and inductors. Okay? So, ito lang yung mga difference between V of T and V na dapat natin i-emphasize. So, one, V of T is the instantaneous or time domain representation well, V is the frequency or phasor domain representation. Okay, kapag V of T, time domain. Kapag phasor form, para siyang frequency domain. Okay? Tapos, V of T is the time dependent while V is not. So, kaya nga V of T, function of time siya. Pero itong V, hindi siya function of time. Ha? So, wag niyong iisipin na function of time siya. Pwede, i-convert niyo siya into V of T para maging function of time uli siya. Okay? Then, V of T is always real with no complex term, while V is generally complex. So, kapag V of T laging real, kapag phasor form, yun na nga, complex sa kasi nga yung phasor is is a complex number representation of sinusoid. Okay? So, let's try to solve some examples para may illustrate natin yung mga concept na discuss ko. Okay? So, for the first one, we have evaluate these complex numbers. So, one we have 40 angle 50 degree plus 20 angle negative 30 degree quantity raised to 1 half. So, dahil meron tayong sum of two complex number, i-convert muna natin dapat sila into rectangular form. Right? So, pwede na lang natin itong i-input sa calc -U. Naturo ko naman na sa video ko about complex number. So, pag transform natin ito into rectangular form, we have 25.71 plus J30.64 Right? Ano naman itong 20 angle negative 30 degree? So, plus 17.32 minus J10 Okay? So, pag in natin to kahit gumamit na lang din tayo ng calc -U, ilan to? Combine natin yung mga real part tapos combine natin yung mga imaginary part 43.03 plus J20.64 and then dahil meron pa tayong raised to 1 half or square root i-convert natin siya into polar form 
So, convert uli natin to into polar form using calq. Anong, anong makukuha nating sagot? 47.72 angle 25.63 degree. Okay? And then, applyin yung property natin kanina kapag meron tayong square root. Anong ginagawa? Ini-square root natin itong r. So, parang r angle phi na tayo, di ba? Square root natin itong 47.72. Then, bar angle 25.63. This time, i-divide to natin. So, kapag ginawa natin yun, anong sagot? 6.91 angle 12.81 degree. Okay, so therefore, this is the answer for 1. So, lahat ng to, hindi ko na pinakita kasi directly solvable naman to by using calculator kung mapapanood nyo yung video ko about complex number. Okay? Next, sa B, we have 10 angle negative 30 degree plus 3 minus K4 over 2 plus K4 times 3 minus J5 conjugate. Okay, so isa-isahin natin. So, dito muna tayo sa numerator. So, combine natin tong 10 angle negative 30 degree dito sa 3 minus K4. Pero convert muna natin to as rectangular form. So, using calculator equal to saan? Input na lang natin. 8.66 minus J5. And then plus, copy natin yung 3 minus J4. Tapos sa denominator, i-file na lang natin. Kasi, pwede naman yun. Para naman silang uh, rectangular form. I-operate muna natin itong complex conjugate. So therefore, ang i-multiply natin is 2 plus J4 times 3 plus J5. So gagawin natin opposite sign yung uh, imaginary part natin na negative J5. So naging positive J5. And then pag final nga natin to, ilan to? Using calculator na lang din ha. Negative 14 plus J22. So, ito, combine na natin. Ilan to? Combine natin yung real part at imaginary part. 11.66 minus J9 over negative 14 plus J22. So, pwede natin i-convert itong numerator at denominator as polar form agad. So, anong polar form ng numerator? Using calculator. 14.73 angle negative 37.66. Ayun denominator. 26.08 angle 122.47 degree. So, applying yung rule kanina for division of complex number in polar form. So, di-divide lang natin to. So, we have anong sagot doon pag di-divide natin. 0 0.565 and then isusubtract natin itong angle na to, diba? So, negative 37.66 minus 122.47 degree. So, ilan to? 0 0.565 angle negative 160.13 degree. So, therefore, this is the final answer. Okay? Next, we have Transform the sinusoids to phasors. For A, we have I is equal to 6 cosine 50T minus 40 degree amps. And B, V is equal to negative 4 sine 30T plus 50 degree V. Okay, so duma tayo sa A. So since yung A natin is in terms of positive cosine na, madali na lang natin siyang i-transform into phasor form. Kasi kukuhain lang natin yung amplitude niya na 6. So, in phasor form, I is equal to yung amplitude niya nga na 6. And then, angle, ano yung phi niya dito, yung phase angle niya dito? Negative 40. So, negative 40 degree. So, ito na yun. Right? Parang I sub M angle phi. Right? Tapos sa B, we have this time, meron tayong negative 4 sine 30T plus 50 degree. So, meron tayong negative sine. So, kailangan muna natin siyang i-transform into positive cosine. So, sige, draw tayo ng mnemonic natin. So, meron tayong negative sine, right? So, nandito siya. Kasi dito yung negative sine omega t natin, di ba? Yung positive cosine omega t dito. So, meron tayong original na negative 4 sine 30T 
plus 50 degree. So, gusto natin siyang makonvert dito sa cosine. So, therefore, kukopyahin natin dito yung cosine omega t plus 50 degree. And then, this time, positive na kasi nasa positive cosine na tayo. Yung amplitude niya na 4. Okay? So, para mapunta natin ngayon itong cosine dito sa negative sign, anong gagawin natin? Mag-adder, magsusubtract tayo ng angle. Add kasi counterclockwise yung ating rotation. So, ilang degree? 90 degree lang. So, plus 90 degree. Okay? So, therefore, we have 4 cosine omega t plus 50 plus 90 is 140 degree. So, pwede natin ngayon matransform into phase or form itong V of T. So, kung ano man yung amplitude niya, copy lang. So, V is equal to 4 angle. Ano ngayon yung kanyang phase angle na V? 140 degree positive. So, angle 140 degree volts. Okay? So, therefore, this is the phase or form of V of T. Okay? Next, we have find the sinusoids represented by these phasors. A, I is equal to negative 3 plus J for amps. B, V is equal to J times 8 E raised to negative J 20 degree volts. Okay, so this time, baliktad naman. Given naman tayo ng phase source, i-convert naman natin sila into sinusoids. Yung form na V of T is equal to V sub M cosine omega T plus V. Okay, so dun muna tayo sa A. So this time, current tayo. So, Kapag meron tayong rectangular form na complex number as phase source, i-convert muna natin lagi sila into polar form para mahanap natin yung amplitude tsaka yung phase angle phi. So using calculator, kapag convert natin itong negative 3 plus J4 into polar form, what is the answer? So lagi na lang tayong gagamit ng calcula kasi sa, sa actual exam naman, eh, allowed tayong gumamit ng calculator. So dapat masin nga talaga yung concepts at operations sa uh, complex number. Okay? So, ano yon? Equal to sa 5 angle 126.87 degree amps. So, ngayon, para makonvert siya into sinusoid form, we have I of T is equal to yung 5 na to, di ba siya yung magiging amplitude? So, I sub M siya. So, parang 5 and then times cosine so, laging meron tayong argument na omega t plus kung ano yung angle natin sa polar form, siya yung phase angle natin dito sa sinusoid form. So, parang siya yung phi. So, plus, eto, 126.87 degree amps. So, therefore, this is the sinusoid form of letter A. Okay? Next, we have, for B, V is equal to J 8 e raised to negative j 20 degree volts. Okay, so this time, meron tayong j 8 e raised to negative j 20 degree volts. So, kung mapapansin nyo, meron tayong complex number j na nakumultiply sa 8 e raised to negative j 20 degree. So, therefore, i-operate muna natin sila. So, para mas madali natin itong mamultiply, di ba itong j is considered complex number in rectangular form? which is purely imaginary. So, convert natin siya into polar form. So, using calculator, ano yun? 1, angle, 90 degree, right? And then, ito rin, convert natin into polar form. Itong 8 as is, siya yung ating magnitude. And then, itong ating angle is yung degree na nakamultiply sa J sa exponent ng E, which is negative 20 degree. So, negative 20 degree. Okay? So, paano ulit kapag nag-multiply tayo ng polar form na complex number? Minamultiply natin yung dalawang magnitude. So, 1 times 8 is 8. And then, ina-add natin yung kanilang angle. So, 90 degree plus negative 20 degree. Or simply, 8 angle 70 degree. Right? So, therefore, ito na yung pinaka-final form natin na polar form. So, Kapag kinonvert na natin into sinusoid, we have V of T is equal to yung H, siya yung kanyang V sub M o yung amplitude. So, we have 8 times cosine. So, laging may omega T plus kung ano yung angle natin sa polar form, 70 degree volts. Okay? So, therefore, this is the final answer. Okay? 
Next we have, given I sub 1 of t is equal to 4 cosine omega t plus 30 degree amps and I sub 2 of t is equal to 5 sine omega t minus 20 degree amps, find their sum. Okay, so this time, using phasor, ay mas madali nating ma-add itong dalawang current. Kasi, pwede muna nating i-convert itong dalawang sinusoid natin into phasor form, which is magiging complex sila. So, gawin nating polar form bawat isa, and then, tsaka natin i-add, using calculator na lang, mako-compute na natin yung kanilang sum. Right? So, sige, convert muna natin itong I sub 1 of T into, into phasor form. So, magiging capital I na siya, and then, equal siya sa 4, yung amplitude niya, so 4 angle 30 degree. Right? So, directly, kinonvert ko na agad siya into polar form kasi naka-positive cosine naman yung representation ng ating I sub 1 of T. Okay? Okay, for I sub 2 of T, we have 5 sine omega T minus 20 degree. So, this time, nasa positive sign tayo. Hindi tayo positive cosine agad. So, i-convert muna natin siya into positive cosine. So, sige, gamit tayo ng mnemonic. So, originally, nasa positive sign omega t tayo. Then, gusto natin mapunta siya sa positive cosine omega t. So, sulat natin yung original. We have 5 sine omega t minus 20 degree. Right? And then, copy natin dito sa positive cosine. We have... 5 cosine omega t minus 20 degree. So, from positive cosine omega t, para mapunta siya dito sa positive sine omega t, anong gagawin natin? Magada magsusubtract. Magsusubtract. Kasi, ang rotation natin is clockwise. So, ilan? 90 degree. So, minus 90 degree. So, therefore, it is equal also to 5 cosine omega t minus 110 degree. Okay? So, pag kinonsform natin ito ngayon sa phasor form, I sub 2 is equal to yung amplitude nga na 5 and then, angle negative 110 degree. So, pwede natin i-add itong dalawang complex number. So, I sub 1 plus I sub 2 is equal to input nga lang sa calc 4 angle 30 degree plus 5 angle negative 100 degree. So, masasolve nga sa calc is what? 1.754 minus J 2.698 So, i-convert nyo ulit ito into polar form. Using calculator, ano siya? 3.218 angel negative 56.97 degree. Okay? So, kailangan natin siyang ibalik sa sinusoid form niya kasi yung given nating dalawa is originally sinusoid form, right? So, so therefore, yung sum nila, let's say, I of 3 of T equal siya sa 3.218 siya yung amplitude times cosine so laging may omega T and then yung angle sa polar form na negative 56.97 degrees. So, minus 56.97 degree amps. Okay? Next, we have Using phasor approach, determine the current I of T in a circuit described by the integral differential equation for I plus 8 integral of I dt minus 3 di over dt is equal to 50 cosine 2t plus 75 degree. Okay, so this time, gagamitin natin yung derive natin kanina na kapag, din kapag din differentiate natin tsaka in-integrate natin yung specific sinusoid in time domain, di ba, meron tayong equivalent form niya doon sa phasor domain. So, kapag nag-differentiate tayo, mag tayo doon sa sinusoid ng J omega sa kanyang phasor form. Kapag in-integrate naman natin, mag divide naman tayo ng J omega doon sa kanyang phasor form. Okay? So, therefore, kapag kinonvert natin both sides into phasor domain, itong equation natin, we have 4, and then capital I, yung I can convert ko lang agad directly into phasor form, plus 8, this time integral I dt. Kapag kinonvert natin yung integral ng I dt into phasor form, equal yun saan? So, capital I divided by J omega, right? Minus 
This time, 3 di dt. Kapag dinerivative naman natin yung sinusoid natin na i, ano magiging representation nyan in phasor form? J omega i. Right? Equals, sa ito, pag tinansform natin into, let's say, polar form na lang ha, 50 angle 75 degree. Right? So, ngayon, anong value natin ni omega? Since diba meron tayong original na 50 cosine 2t plus 75 degree, diba itong 2t para siyang omega t, right? So therefore, ano si omega? 2. So ngayon, substitute natin ngayon dito sa ating transform phasor equation. So, 4i plus 8 times i over j 2 minus 3 times j omega 2 times i is equal to 50 angle 75 degree. So, pag factor out natin itong i, we have i times quantity 4 plus 8 over j2 or parang 8 divided by 2 4 over j, right? Minus 3j times 2. So, 3 times 2 is 6j equals 50 angle 75 degree. So, ito using calculator equal to saan? I times 4 minus J10, right? Equals 50 angle 75 degree. So, dividing both sides by 4 minus J10 para masolve si I, we have I is equal to cancel 50 angle 75 degree over 4 minus J10. So, therefore, operate na lang natin to. So, pwede nyo gawin, convert nyo tong 4 minus J10 into polar form or kahit i-direct nyo na to sa calcio eh. Pwede nyo nang masolve yan eh. Yun nga lang, pag nasolve nyo in, in rectangular form, i-convert nyo siya into polar form. So, so sige, pakita na lang natin. I-convert natin ito mo ng 4 minus J10 into polar form using calculator. Equal yun saan? 10.77 angle, negative 68.2 degree. So, apply ngayon yung rule for division of two complex number in polar form. So, divide lang natin to. Yung 50 divided by 10.77. Ilan yun? 4.642. And then, kapag division, anong ginagawa natin sa mga angle? Sinusubtract. So, we have 75 degree minus negative 68.2 degree. So, therefore, we have 4.642 angle 75 minus negative 68.2 degree is 143.2 degree. So, therefore, ito yung kanyang phasor form. So, kapag binilik natin into sinusoid form, we have, ito yung amplitude ng current natin. So, 4 times 642 cosine omega t plus itong angle na to, siya yung face natin sa sinusoid. So, we have plus 143.2 degree amps. So, therefore, ito yung ating I of t. So, di ba napansin nyo, mas napadali yung pag-solve natin dito sa current using the phasor form, right? Gumamit lang tayo ng complex number. And then, tinansform natin back to sinusoid form yung current. Okay? So, I think that's it for this video, phasors. So, sana may natutunan kayo sa video na to at maraming salamat sa panonood.